You're the ranking Republican on the House Finance Committee, which decides tax issues. In a recent article to your local newspapers, you expressed concern about the potential impacts of the governor's proposed carbon tax. So how would it affect citizens? Well, it would. And, and first of all, we need to talk a little bit originally about the global warming and carbon, the need for carbon tax and so forth. And that's somewhat in dispute, but personally I feel we need to address the issue. But the governor has come out with a carbon tax, a tax on utilities and a tax on all of us who drive cars and use gasoline and diesel and so forth. That would bring in about $3.3 billion. And when he first came up with a bill or the idea it was to have this money go to education and other things. I think that's a big mistake because if we're going to do a carbon tax, it needs to go right back into reducing carbon if that's what we're trying to do. We are already one of the cleanest states in the nation. The reason being that we have hydro and nuclear together provides about 80 percent of our energy. And so with a little bit of wind and solar that we've implemented, it's roughly 90 percent now. So the question is, do we really need a carbon tax when our state's carbon is just minuscule compared to the rest of the world? Would the governor's carbon tax actually reduce CO2 output in Washington state? That's the problem. It really doesn't. Because, for example, what are the utilities going to do? They are already on a pathway to reduce carbon on their own. So my recommendation is tell the utilities they need to reduce their carbon to like by 90% or something like that by the year 2030, maybe 2040. They'll get there. The market will drive them there. In regards to transportation, the, the car and automobile, boats, buses, trucks sector, I think we're going to get there in any event because they're making lots of electric vehicles out there. It's going to take a while to get all those on the market, but there's quite a demand for those vehicles. So that's the way to do it, is to incentivize the utilities, incentivize us to get off carbon. Don't penalize us with a tax, especially when it's questionable where those dollars go. So are there other ways that we might be able to reduce carbon in Washington state without a tax? Well, I think so. And as I've mentioned with utilities, let them get off of it. We can expand nuclear, which is non a greenhouse emitting entity. Uh, we can always add a little bit more solar and a little bit more wind, but I'm not highly in favor of that because there's other ways to get there. Conservation is one way. That, that's always out there also. So that factor plus the transportation sector and getting more electric vehicles online and so forth and improving gas mileage of our vehicles, we're going to get there. If citizens have concerns about the carbon tax or other legislative issues, what would you tell them? Well, I would tell them to write to the governor, to write to us as legislators because we can utilize our citizens' comments to, uh, in our discussions with other legislators and what we can put into the bill that will be hopefully more positive than negative when we get through with this. There is always the underlying uh, idea of an initiative out there. We as legislators would rather legislate than have an initiative that may be poorly drafted come out. So hopefully we can come up with a solution that will work and hopefully without a carbon tax and still meet our goals.